and welcome back to devlog. In the last part I worked on ropes and in this part I work on water. We first need to check how the player collides with water and exits the water. This is really easy actually. In some two-dimensional games such as Spelunky, while the water has more of a physics-based system for its movement, the entering and exiting of water can be a bit more complicated because water can be anywhere, but in my game the water is all in a designed organic manner. So all we really have to do for my system is have the water detect if the player has collided with it when the player is not in the water, so if the player is falling into the water, then all we have to do is detect if the player is moving downwards, if they are they have moved into the water, and then the player will be set into the water, which has its own logic. Then if the player is in the water, the way you exit the water is by moving upwards, if the player exceeds the top of the water, as in the top of the water's collider, by a Y value, so the player has moved ahead of the water's surface. The player will then exit the water and have a positive Y value so they won't be instantly re-entering the water based on the collision setup. Really easy, is player moving into water set in water? Is player moving out of water set out of water? This does mean that in certain circumstances where the water is maybe in a floating block, the player won't have correct collision detection for entering and exiting the water, but I don't have any level designs for that currently, so when that happens I will just make it adapt to such a setup. But for now, this works fine. The logic for the player entering the water is very simple. We swap primary state systems, so this is another main state system, as in on the ground, on a wall, in the air, on a rope, in water, which means it has completely unique movement scripting. We will then enter a Y velocity amount into the player. This means they're going to be moving down for this amount when in the water, but this is controlled by the water movement that I will explain later. So this basically just means as the player enters the water they'll be pushed down by how dense the water is. This means that in certain circumstances for wall informations I can make maybe some water that is dense so the player won't be pushed down as much when they enter the water. But for this current circumstance, the entrance velocity is 6, the player enters the water at a normal velocity, they will move down for 6 force units and enter into the water. Each water has its own visual effect for once the player enters into the water. This is just a disabled child object of the water that is placed on its surface. When the player enters the water, we will duplicate this object, enable this object, and then move it on the x-axis to wherever the player entered the water, making a visual effect of the player splashing. This also has a nice little audio effect in it. When the player exits the water, we have the complete opposite happen. The player is added to their Y velocity amount, this being a jump system, so the player is actually jumping out of the water in this sense, and the player is being set into the air. We then have a Y velocity of the player being pushed into the air, so the player exits the water and then they have a little burst of Y velocity speed as they exit the water. We play an animation for this, and we use the same visual splash effect for exiting the water because it seemed a bit unnecessary to make two different effects for entering and exiting water. Now all we have to do is figure out how water movement works. Really, 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 really easy. All I do is I use the current values in the player's motor, motor scripting, this being the Y movement amount and the X movement amount, and all I do is I, instead of lerping these with our usual scripting of lerping velocity or lerping speed momentum, I lerp these manually in the water movement scripting, although technically lerping them otherwise would also be manually because I'm just using my same script to lerp it. Man manually. And I will just lerp our momentum for what direction the player should move to based on our input direction. So if we're pressing up, we'll move up. If we're pressing right, we'll move right. If we're pressing left, we'll move left. Down, we'll move down. It's, it's input directions, baby. It's really easy. The only real difference is that the moving in the water has a very slow control. So if you're moving, for example, up and then you want to move hard left, you'll have some more movement issues, you won't immediately move right or left or whatever direction I said. 
you'll have your character still moving upwards as their value is very slowly lurped towards the direction they should be moving in. The logic for this is that moving in the water would have different movements, it's a bit more sluggish and a bit more controlled, because personally speaking I don't particularly like games where water movement is just regular movement but slow. I wanted water movement to have its own unique dynamics while playing similar to the base game, having its own specialised design for how you move in water, so it has its own unique movements. I also feel like this style of water movement really matches the floaty, toonish nature of the base game's movement. It's not very pixel perfect or precise, There's um, there is a lot of control given to the player in their movements, but there's still this level of floaty, fun little toonish movements. So the water is sort of an example exaggeration of this. Furthermore, when water movering we'll have a different attack function. This being our dash function or attack function, this is for breaking things in game, whacking enemies in their soft spots and their skulls to kill them instantly, the usual thing. When using this in water, we'll have a very, very fun spin animation of our character doing a little twirl in water and whacking everything in front of them. This immediately redirects the player's movement direction, adds a amount of velocity and force to the player, and then it gives them a cooldown of when they can use this function once again. This is a way for the player to have a much more controlled movement in water. This means the player isn't going to be restricted to the floaty water movement. If they really hate it, they can keep using their dash function and optimized movement in water to, to, to use this and have more control over their movements. The downside being, once you use a dash function, you don't have much control of your player after you have used a dash function, meaning if you dash incorrectly, you could go into some spikes and kill yourself maybe. Now let's talk about the animations. As usual, I think these animations look really good. The swimming animation was originally going to be more of a kicking with your legs animation, but I felt like a breaststroke was a bit better for swimming movements. I think it has a lot more uniqueness to how the player moves when swimming. There is definitely more of a movement to this. It looks a whole lot more stylish in game and it, it, it matches your movement in game a lot better. The dash is really good. This is your character doing a very nice spin. Once again, very difficult to do spin animations when the character is a 2D sprite, but I feel like with this I kind of made it in a way where the player has some satisfaction to the spin. I think you can really give the idea of the character actually turning with this animation. Then after the spin they just boost out of it with their regular movement mobility. The idle animation when swimming is the character wiggling in water. The swimming jump is the player doing a final breaststroke and exiting the water, and the swimming enter is just the player going from in air to swimming down in the water. It's very simple. These are some very simple animations, but very good looking animations. At least I think they're very good. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Finally, we have the actual visual for the water surface. This was really complicated. I had different setups for this for what I wanted the water surface to look like and how I wanted it to be visualized in world space. The issue with this was making it look two-dimensional while also acting in a three-dimensional way with the camera angle. So when you're in the water looking up, you can see the surface of the water above you. Or if you are above the water looking down, you can see the surface of the water below you. Obviously, with the 3D perspective camera, with this current game setup, this is easy. It's just making a visual for a two-dimensional water sprite which it currently is, to work in this three-dimensional way. The way I did this is just having multiple layered sprite for different parts of the water surface animation, layered on top of each other and at certain angles to give the illusion of this three-dimensional water, when in actuality it is just a bunch of sprite renderers. All I do is have these sprite renderers scale and scroll their textures to give the illusion of wave movements, then I have different ones animate at different speeds, and then have an animation looping for these moving up and down to simulate the surface of a water's surface. I am a bit unsure as to how this looks, but I am pretty proud of how it looks so far, so I won't be updating this in the immediate future, but I may in the distant future. I think it does match the art style of the player very much. This having a nice little tunish style to the water 
but I do also feel like it could be updated. One solution I did try is having a mesh of a three-dimensional block be the water, and then have the surface move and ripple like an actual water surface, but I felt like this looked a bit too out of art style for the game, and didn't really match well with the rest of the art style, so I felt like a two-dimensional water surface would look a whole lot better. Let me know what you think of the water surface design in the comments below. And that is it for this devlog. I have mentioned this before in a previous devlog, but personally speaking, I have never been on the mindset of water level in-game bad. I think water design and water levels in-game can be very good and very fun. You just have to design around for them. If you make a water level just player movement but slow, it isn't very engaging for a player, so I feel like underwater movement should be either a alternate to the player's regular movements or a wholly different movement capability that still matches the player's regular movement. Or is just completely different, I guess. I'm pretty proud of how this one looks. I think, through my testing, it's pretty fun. If you play my videos game and don't go into a blind seething rage at this water level, well, they'll now be happy. Leave a comment below for anything you would like to see in future devlogs. Bye! I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house.